You know, it started as a missing child case. Six-year-old Brittany Beers, who you see right here, last seen outside her Sturgis home. That was back in 1997. For 19 years, it has gone unsolved. But now a new person of interest, 65-year-old Daniel Furlong. He was convicted in the brutal murder of another young girl. You see her there, 11-year-old Jody Perrick. That's right. WSBT 22's Suzanne Spencer spent weeks talking to investigators. Suzanne, the similarities are obvious to police. It boils down to two things, Jennifer. His capability in a composite drawing, one of a middle-aged man who was last seen talking to Brittany the night she disappeared. The lights have faded in the city of Sturgis. We've never been able to move on. An answer. We've always wondered where, how, who. Untold. She was a very sweet little girl. Brittany Beers loved her hair, the color pink, and everyone knew her smile. Yeah. Yeah. Painted in the minds of her family. We still see her as the little sick girl. It was evening, September 16th, 1997. Brittany out riding her bike. Her mom went to run some errands. Her half-brother saw her sitting on a bench, but that was the last anyone heard from Brittany. I haven't given up. We haven't given up. It's in this room in the Sturgis Police Department that the light stays on for Brittany's case. There's 10 binders of the tips. It's Nearly 1,200 of them, 95% of them, Chief Jeff Smith has closed out. Whether that's through polygraph tests, whether that's through backgrounds with people determining that they weren't around and they weren't capable. So we've made some progress. Then this year, Daniel Furlong convicted of murdering 11-year-old Jody Perrick eight years after her body was found in a Constantine cemetery. When we first heard of that, um, flags start to go up. Perrick's body found 15 miles away from where Beers went missing. Anytime anyone in our area is capable of doing those types of things to children, to us, they're a possible suspect or person of interest. Furlong was caught in 2015 after he tried to lure another girl into his white pigeon garage, but she got away. His DNA came up as a match to DNA found on Perrick's body and clothing, but no one expected what happened next. Did your mind immediately go to that composite? Yeah, 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 yes it did. Two reasons. One, he's capable, and two, he looks like the composite of the person that Brittany was possibly last seen talking to. I'm telling the truth. Furlong was grilled on the Perrick and Beers case in an interrogation. Smith was there to hear it all. Cold, cold, unremorseful. It didn't seem like he really cared. And that attributes to my fa the fact that that's why it, it doesn't sit well with me. But he says what he heard isn't good enough. We know what he did to Joey Perrick. And then several years later, he basically tried to do the same thing again, other than the girl in White Pigeon was able to escape. So if that's the case, what's to say he didn't do it before? Detectives would not tell me if there was physical evidence like DNA linking Furlong to Beer's disappearance. In that interrogation room, though, Furlong said he had nothing to do with Beer's, that he didn't kill her. We also know he underwent polygraph tests, mm. and investigators at this point are not releasing those results. There are still other persons of interest in this case? There are a couple others, and they're not naming them at this point. The only reason they named Furlong is because of the heightened awareness of Perrick's case, you know, that was right. all over the news for quite some time. The takeaway here, though, if you know anything about this case, you're asked to call the Sturgis Police and also the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. We've got all that information for you on our website and mobile app. It's been almost 20 years, but that one tip could really help solve that it's case. It's just a thread of hope. They need. Yeah, yeah, Suzanne, yeah. thank you.